and we are now live. Hello everybody, my name is Randy. I'm the lucky owner of Solari Ristorante. It's a uh, kind of a chilly evening on Thursday. That's why we have such great comfort food. Um, Chef Filippo this evening is gonna talk to us all about polenta. And I'm gonna let Filippo get started because he wants to get the pleno started. And then it's gonna come back to me because I have an important announcement to make. So everyone, Chef Filippo Piccini. Ciao. Yes, I wanna start because we're gonna need 1.5 liter of boiling water, so let's get started with the water and the polenta, which is cornmeal. You can see it. that's what it look like when it's raw. And we need to have the uh, water boiling before we can start the polenta. So I started already a mushroom sauce, which I'm going to keep doing. So mushroom sauce is basically just a little bit of chili pepper, parsley, and garlic. What are you putting in here? Parsley. So everybody watching, I'm gonna make sure Filippo goes through all the measurements again. If you do wanna write it down, we'll go through all the measurements again. In just a moment, he's just yeah. trying to get everything started. There you go. So, polenta is a very, uh, almost a pheasant meal, uh, was from the mountain of Italy and we love it uh, all over Italy. Of course it starts from the north where the climate is more cold, but it is very diffuse all over Italy. So now we put a little bit of salt and there is no measure here because it depends how salty you like your polenta and what you're gonna season with at the end. Just a little bit. So now is when you see that it starts steaming, then you pour the polenta. Yeah, zoom in if you would. Get started. From now on, you never leave the polenta alone. Never. For no reason. So those was 250 grams in 1.5 liter. Which is for this brand uh, we're using. But every every kind of polenta has a different grain. So you might have different instruction on your bag. So check the instruction, all the polenta as a different cooking time. There you go. Now we have 25, 30 minutes with the flame, the, the bigger flame you can provide underneath the, the, the pot. Always stirring. I use a whisk before to avoid any lump. You're gonna see that as soon as the water dries, I will switch to a wooden paddle. Randy. Thank you everybody. Um, I'm just going to say a few words. I'm going to do a little bit of an announcement here in a moment, but a couple of things. One, for those of you watching, Filippo's going to be back in just one uh, minute or two or three. We're going to go through all of the measurements and the ingredients he went through. I'm also going to thank some of the people that have joined. I see we have Jan, 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 Jan coming back. Thank you. I see Phil join. Again, we're going to do the Tuscany tour next year. I see Brad, Brad Shack join. Thank you, good to see you again. A um, Couple of things, first of all, thanks for joining us again on our Solari Live. This is gonna be a little bit of a shorter one, 40 minutes at the most. Um, when Chef Filippo comes back, he's gonna talk a little bit about the history of polenta, where it's from in Italy. As he mentioned, it's Northern Italy, Central Italy like Tuscany. 
um, some of the variations you can make at home. It's a really fascinating dish. People either love it or they hate it. I love it personally. And there's so many different ways that you can prepare it. It's something you can have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, with basically every type of food. If you would like to order any of our polenta, we can give it to you tonight and Friday night and Saturday night. So if you'd like to order to-go food and have this be one of the side dishes, we're doing a really great polenta with um, mushrooms and others. So we'll come back to that in a few minutes, but let's bring it back to Chef Filippo. Oh, you can see how much dried up already, but you cannot forget about it, so keep stirring. Now it's almost time to switch to the wood. There you go. Now that we're sure that there is no lamp, we keep stirring every minute, minute and a half. Be sure that you never forget about it. And we start with the mushroom, which is just sauteed mushroom. Okay, can I ask you a few questions, Filippo? Yes. First of all, uh, how many grams of polenta did you put in to begin with? 250 gram of polenta for 1.5 liter. But as I said, check on your uh, own bag because uh, every uh, brand of polenta has a different uh, time of cooking. So just so everybody knows, we have a wonderful um, organic Italian polenta that if you are interested in getting some, you can come by Solari, we can help you get the polenta. It's absolutely delicious. We're gonna come back with more of the measurements in a moment. One of the announcements I wanted to make though, that you maybe already know, is that at Solari, we do now have the ability to provide wine to go. As you can imagine, this entire restaurant is like the world's greatest wine shop. And all of our wine has always been for, available for sale if you came and dined in. Now all of our wine is still available for sale, but you can do it to go at reduced prices because it's not a dining. Call us up, work with us and what you like to have, we'll take good care of you. Plus, Tommy has created some cocktails to go. You want a great Negroni with your dinner tonight or maybe tomorrow night? He has a packaging of like three Negronis or four Negronis together. You come pick them up, you go home, you put some ice in a cup, you pour it in. It's incredible. All you have to do is pick up to go cocktails. We have the wine to go. It's really wonderful. Tonight we have a great opportunity on some of our, uh, our um, lamb chops, excuse me. Chef Filippo just got a new batch of lamb chops in today. So we have a great amount of lamb chops, all fresh, just arrived today. So tonight, tomorrow night, Saturday, we're gonna be doing the polenta to go. Let us know what you want. We're gonna have different variations and get along with some lamb chops. Or maybe one of our great vegan dishes like our melanzano, the eggplant tataki. Look at our menu on the website, it's awesome. Let's go back to Filippo, let's get some more of these measurements. Yeah, we're almost there. So, now so just... go look at the consistency now, Sean. Totally different than it was just a moment ago. Yeah, all the little grain needs to yep. completely cook. It's very hard if you yep. think about it. A piece of corn, even if it's broke, it takes like 25 to 30 minutes to really absorb water yep. and make a creamy, uh, nice polenta. So oh, beautiful. Still gravy. Yeah, show the texture, then people at home know yeah. that. When, so he's right now about eight minutes into the process. The texture should kind of look like that. Remember, the only thing in that pan is 250 grams of polenta, one and a half liters of water. That's the ratio we use with and this polenta. Seven and, a of salt. and maybe seven grams of salt, maybe it's half a teaspoon, something like that. Um, then maybe talk a little bit about what you're doing with the mushrooms. I know it's not polenta, but how many, what kind of mushrooms do you have? So, and what are you doing? I actually mix, uh, I love to mix mushroom porcini and shiitake, uh, like 50-50. I got a couple of bottom mushrooms as well. Just, uh, I feel that the mixing mushroom, it gives different texture, different flavor. So uh, since the porcini has to cook a little bit more than the shiitake, I put earlier the porcini with salt, garlic, pepper, and chili pepper. 
And then I finish with the shiitake, and I put the same thing, parsley, chili pepper, chili flakes, I love chili flakes, that's the Italian way. Just crushed cayenne, dry, and salt, parsley. You see this Italian flag here? Red, green, and white. We didn't. Purpose. If you didn't pick it up, Filippo's very proud of himself that he created the Italian flag with the green, white, and red. Um, I think he's been eating a lot of polenta, if you ask me, but I guess it looks like the Italian flag. So you see, now the, the fire is low, now we keep steering. That's a muscle job. So the, the one hard thing about polenta is you cannot get it started and then go and hang out with the kids or do something else. You are you are taking a, you know, full attention on it the entire time. Um, he'll be doing this the whole time that we're doing the class, constantly stirring. In fact, if you make polenta all the time, you can actually buy like an automatic stir for those people that really get into this in a big way. Let me welcome a few people. We have uh, Chris, the chainsaw, the join. Um, we have Bruce, 279. Thanks so much for coming back again. Uh, Mrs. Reese, delighted to have you on board. Awesome that you're able to join us again. Really appreciate it. Um, we have Dave, my wine friend. Dave, the CPA. Dave, thanks for coming back. Can't wait to see you um, when everything's over here and you can come back to the restaurant. You and I are going to hang out and drink some wine. We have Deborah. I think Deborah's been to everyone. Thank you, Deborah. Um, she delivers really wonderful wines for us. She works for a great um, wine distribution firm and just a wonderful human being. And we also have CSR Mom, love Tuscany. Thank you guys. Oh, we have Urban Cell Gastronomy. Hey, he's like one of the best food photographers in San Diego. If anybody's listening to the sound of my voice, you want to get connected with one of the best food photographers in San Diego. Um, I won't say his real name for privacy reasons, but Urban Cell Gastronomy. Just look at him on, on Instagram, Urban Cell underscore Gastronomy. Um, you're going to see amazing, amazing food photos. And um, so great to have you guys on board. And uh, Vicky, Vicky, thanks for joining. Back to Filippo. Okay, see ya. We're almost done. We're kind of five, ten minutes away. You can tell that the consistency change a lot. Now, at this point, we decide what we want to do with this polenta. Because we, we can eat it like a risotto with butter and parmesan, I will show you. And from there, you can put some mushroom or gorgonzola or a ragu. In Tuscany, we used to do it when we have uh, pork season. So we, we have like the, the ribs chopped down in a sauce. We did once here at the at Solari as a special. We did, it was fun. Yeah, or in, in the mountain part, they, they're more with the capriolo, which is a venison ragu. Uh, that's a very traditional on uh, Tus Tuscany mountain. Yep. And actually polenta is very ancient dish. It was a dish of the poor. And it starts with uh, grano saraceno, which is, uh, we talked about it before, buck. Uh, buckwheat. Yeah, buckwheat. So what he's saying is the Italian for buckwheat. Yes. Yeah. Uh, buckwheat uh, polenta, which was called taragna, uh, it changed when Columbus came in the United States. Yep. And he bring back the... The buckwheat? No, the buckwheat oh. was there oh. before. Uh, he brought back the mice. The, um, oh, the maize. Yeah. The corn. The corn. Yeah, so just so everybody knows, Corn and corn meal being the base of polenta is is not what it has to be. And as Filippo was saying, corn came from the New World. So before you know, 1500, um, polenta was not corn because there was no corn. Well, we have a quick moment. I just want to do a shout out to our good friend Oz at Cueva Bar. He's joined us before. Thank you, Oz. Um, there's nobody, uh, That's he has an amazing restaurant in University Heights. Very few people are doing more for the community, keeping the community together than Oz. If you have a chance, do whatever you can to support Cueva Bar in University Heights. We 
are ready. See? KK Dreamer joined. So basically now I want to put some aside to have uh, dry polenta because polenta you let it uh, cool down and you can make crostini like it was bread. You can make a fry or you can eat it like this, as I said, like a risotto. So now we're gonna move here and put some on this wood. So just so you know, Filippo, M. Caliente says, stir it up, little darling. Okay. And Jay Val girl, hello back again. Thanks for coming on. So leave it this year, you're gonna dry up. But what we can do with this, just toss some butter and parmesan cheese or olive oil. I like to put butter, parmesan cheese and olive oil. You should let them know about how much it is. People want to know what you're putting in there. We left on the pan uh, kind of half, so 125 gram and I put uh, 75 gram of butter and 10 gram of oil. So you see, it become more creamy. And we serve it like that. Nice touch. We did last week with truffle, which is now in season we have bianchetto, especially on North Italy, like Piedmont. They're gonna love in this season polenta with truffle. A little bit more parmesan cheese. There you go. Just so you know, Filippo, we have uh, someone on that's viewing right now saying hi from Anchorage, Alaska. Wow. She yes. wants to know if we deliver our polenta up there. She's hungry tonight. So. Yeah. Plating. Yeah, sorry to everybody. We're getting feedback on the use of grams versus ounces. Yeah, we're living in a kitchen that's grams and millimeters and so on. There we're base 10. Yeah, zoom on in there Sean, with your camera on the, uh, the okay. texture. Okay. Just so everybody knows, he started about um, 16 minutes ago maybe, and this is what it looks like, so it gives you a feeling of length of time. Definitely email us at info at solarilounge.com if you have any questions on the recipe, um, any ideas you have, things you've done at home, send us photos. Oh my gosh, we have my desert friend, Jim, that's joined. Hello, Jim. We also have um, Joseph, one of our key team members. Joseph, thanks for joining again. You've been a regular viewer on Slurry Live. Can't wait to see you again. That's amazing gorgonzola cheese. And it's a mushroom medley. And that's how we serve polenta with mushroom and gorgonzola. Now I want to show you how we uh, use this polenta, which is still hot. Sean, you can come here. Just put it back down there for a second. Chef Filippo, you created like, I wish everybody could be here and smell it. I'm just saying that perfectly creamy polenta with those freshly sauteed mushrooms, which we have the, um, we have porcini, we have shiitake. Then he has just the exact right amount of gorgonzola cheese. And obviously he needs a little bit of garnish. That is a beautiful, beautiful dish. If somebody wants something like that to go, give us a call tonight, Friday, Saturday. Call us up. This could be in your home, made by the amazing Chef Filippo Pacini of Tuscany. So as I say, that's one way to eat it up, like a risotto with mushroom, and you just begin or mix it up. And you kind of love the flavor. But that's one way to go. There is another way to use polenta. I did some before, exactly like I did now. And I let it cool down. 
so you want to see how easy it's going to be to cut it, the polenta with the, the, the cool thing is they cut it with this string. There's yes. probably a million ways they could do it, but I can't think of anything more romantic. No, dare I say it, there is, sexy, than cutting it with that rope. There is that reason, because they don't want to cut the cutter board. So, if you go with a knife, yeah. after a while you have this cutter board with all it's the It's brilliant, iron. yeah. So they want to just keep it... I think in English we call this a genius idea. So, that's what the polenta is going to look like if you order. We're going to put on the grill, mark, and send with that same dressing. As Randy was saying, is available only tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday. Or if you ask really nice, maybe after that too. <laughs> Any other question? We have a question on, so you've shown us that you can do it with mushrooms, but is polenta really good with everything? I mean, what would you, what would you recommend that you pair with that would be like the best things for Chef Filippo? For me, is with pork. This part of the rib, the day you actually butcher the the pork, you have this fresh uh, rib, and we cook with a tomato sauce, which is greasy, intense, and I love it. Uh, not on a diet, as you can see. So I love pork. And polenta. What about if you're making um, breakfast? What's the best thing to pair polenta with for breakfast? You can have it with egg, parmesan cheese, and butter, as we said. Uh, break an egg on it. When it's cold, you, you have to think about it. When polenta is very hot, it almost cooks. You see, it, it melts all the gorgonzola cheese and it almost cooks whatever you put inside. Because mm -hmm. it's like boiling. So it's a uh, like 212, let's say. Barley Man in Escondido, thanks for joining. Uh, another question we have, and uh, we are monitoring. If you have any questions, go ahead and send it in, or any experiences you've had with polenta you'd like to share. But we had a question around, so you make a lot of polenta, and you have a lot left over. Um, what is it that, how do you best store it? How long will it last? All those so things. You cover with the plastic. You can store in the fridge for at least a couple of days. I will not go over. We do a fresh every day, that's easy. But if you have a leftover, the day after is always good. As I said, grill, just put on the grill, eat it up like it's bread. Or you can always fry. So make tiny little square and deep fry. And it's gonna be delicious, served with parmesan cheese on top. And again, whatever you like. Consider it your bread. Fabulous. We do have a question. Um, Filippo, you can answer it or I can. Are you still providing ingredients like eggs, fresh pasta, cornmeal uh, via curbside? Yeah, yeah, we still doing that. And if you want polenta, uh, I will give you the right amount. As I did now for a family of four, you're good with 250 grams. So yeah. it's a quarter of a kilogram, which is usually what you have to buy. We give, uh, you you made the price, I don't remember, but it's That's really right. a cheap. Yeah, I mean, we're talking price. like four bucks or something. I mean, it's not very much. You can add it on to an order really easy. Yeah, just to extend what Filippo said is um, we are getting fresh vegetables and produce and even meats every single day. So if you do need cucumbers, if you want eggs, anything like that. Obviously, we're not a supermarket. We can't promise we'll have everything. But if you just call us up, 619-270-9670, ask us what we have. We can just basically put a collection of fresh vegetables, eggs, butter, whatever you'd like in a box, and we'll just charge you what we get it at. It's no big deal. Um, we're happy just to help out. If you're coming by anyways for food, you might as well get a few items and skip having to go for the supermarket for one of two things. Wait a second. I, wait, 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 wait. I thought that was me getting that. You are sneaky. I'll do it for you again, don't worry. Great. We have everything here. Wonderful. And uh, Jim, my good friend from NCR, thank you again for joining. We really appreciate it. Hey, Jim, we got to get some food sent up to Escondido 
for you and the barley man, my friend Dave. Hey, you have some wine as well? Okay, Sean, why don't we do uh, flip back here to me if you would. Hello everybody again. Um, I just want to thank Chef Filippo for doing this. He has a lot of fun doing it. We do as well. This was meant to be kind of a mini little Solari Live. We had a lot of questions on polenta. The next one we're probably going to do is a, a small Solari Live is on bolognese. If you want to make the greatest bolognese say that you've ever had, we're going to come in and do that um, as a one focus topic. Also remember, we have a great wine shop here. All of our Solari wine has always been available to anybody. Now it's available for takeout. Tommy has man. Oh, this is hey. my son. This is my How son. Are you guys, we're probably not practicing the best social distancing right now. Oh yes, yeah, but this is that's okay. But this is my son, and we're together all the time. Sure, and Gene Pool, but I'll still stand kind of over in this direction. I just want to finish up with uh, Tommy, his brother, my other son has uh, really wonderful containers of, um, oh, he has wonderful containers of Manhattan. Manhattan's with rye, Manhattan's with bourbon. He has um, really great skinny margaritas. And he also has the world's most wonderful Italian lemon drops. So when you place an order, which we really hope you do, tonight, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, just put in an order for cocktails to go. You take them home, put some ice in a cup or get them cold and you're off and running. The reason I had asked for uh, my son to come in is our next Solari Live is going to be on Saturday morning. Just so everybody knows, we were supposed to do a live cooking class on Saturday morning, this Saturday, I think the 28th, for pizza. Our master pizza chef, Brian, who's been doing pizza for eight years, was leading the class. We're clearly not doing the class here at Solari. We're going to be doing it at home. In fact, we're not sure, but we think we're going to be doing the pizza class at my house because we're going to show you how to make pizza at home. So in a regular oven with things like the stones and so on. So Saturday morning, 1030 for one hour. Brian's going to do it. Um, I just gave you the logistics. Brian, talk a little bit about what you're going to cover. I only got like 30 seconds. He took a lot of my time up. I got a pizza in the oven. We're going to be making dough start to finish. So you got basically the four stages. You're going to mix the dough from raw. You're going to boil the dough. We're going to learn about how, how we open the dough. And then, of course, cooking it. And I'll be cooking it as if we were cooking it at home. I got a pizza steel. So it'll be uh, it's a great class. So hopefully you guys can all join us on the live. And someday in the future, come on in and join us here doing the class. Thank you, right, Brian. Come back to the oven. Back to it. If you would, we also sell dough balls here. So Brian and the team makes really wonderful dough balls. We're always ready to do pizza. That's the hardest part of doing pizza at home. So if you ever just want to come by and get some of our dough balls, you just take them home. You just put it on the, your stone or whatever, cook it in an oven, and you're ready to go. One last point that some of you may find humorous is um, my girlfriend, who we live together, just learned for the first time we're doing the pizza class in our house. So I'm getting some immediate real-time feedback. I'm sure it's all 100% positive, but I just remembered I probably should have said something sooner. On that note, thank you so much for joining us for our Solari Live. Our next one is gonna be Saturday, 10.30 in the morning, maybe at our house, with Brian doing um, pizza. I think you're really gonna like it. Chef Filippo, you're amazing. Yep, thank you, ciao and order polenta tonight with mushroom gorgonzola. Only tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday. Okay, thank you. Ciao, ciao.